less than a week ago, I took advantage of a end of year sale from Mixwave. They make drum and guitar plugins, and I picked up the Benson Chimera 30. I've heard demos of it, it sounds amazing, but when I put my tally through it, my playing, maybe because I'm not a great guitar player, uh, I wasn't able to get the sound that I wanted. I pulled up presets and it was close. I tried starting from scratch and moving everything around because with this, you got the amp, also the cabinet. You've got four different uh, speakers to choose from. You've got, I think, 15 or 16 different mics. You can move it around. Uh, I found myself scrambling because I had too many options. This is not a knock on the plugin creators, but it was just too many variables for me. So I thought, how about I could isolate them with measurement and see if I get to the response that I wanted to. With system engineering, I typically have a target curve for a system, but I never thought about it that way for a guitar. So I thought like, well, how about if I started with it flat uh, and then shaped from there? So my thought process was to leave the treble and bass at noon here, use the amp's natural voicing, see if I could pick a microphone, move it around to get it as flat as I could, then use corrective EQ afterwards to get it to the response that I want. So we'll see how I ended up getting there. So uh, here in Gig Performer, I have a pink noise generator running into the left channel of the Benson through an EQ into channel one for my measurement signal. That's gonna run here into Smart. And then the reference signal is output one here into two, again, into smart as my reference signal. So let's walk through this, the thought process I use to get to the response I want. Uh, excited to share it with you. Here we are, here's the, again, the amp, and then I've got the cab. I can select up to four different speakers and four different mics on each of them, which is crazy amount of options, but I actually ended up just opting for a single microphone right in the middle and choosing the tube 47. So I'm actually gonna cycle through this and show you some of the changes, but first we're going to measure just the amp. So I actually, the cool thing about being able to isolate it here in the plugin is I can see just the natural response of the, uh, just the amp without the cab. So I'm gonna stick it up here. I can see here that this is the amp cabinet with the treble and bass here just at five. And I've set the volume here just to be on the right on the edge of breakout, which is the sound that I wanted. So I'm gonna capture this guy. We're just gonna call it head only. So I know that's what's happening my, to my guitar signal with just the head. And now if I introduce the cabinet as well, we see a big change. So it's running through an impulse response of the cabinet with this microphone. So I'm assuming this is a Neumann 47, but I can have this here and I actually can cycle through different microphone types and we'll see the response change. We'll go to something really drastic. So the ribbon, a Royer 121 or 122, obviously a big low end bump. That's something you get, excuse me, out of that microphone. If I move here to a 57, we have a lot of low end roll off because it uh, at 160, it starts to roll off a good bit. So I could throw up a bunch of different mics, start playing with the levels and combining them and playing with distances. But again, I just found myself chasing my tail. So I started of like, okay, what with the microphone right in the center on axis at that distance, uh, I'm gonna start with the 247 and that got me the most neutral response, believe it or not. I could really not get rid of this top end thing. So that wasn't a mic problem, this was a cabinet issue. So I thought like, okay, what if I can move the microphone? So I actually went uh, off axis here, let me move this guy over. I'm gonna move the microphone over. So let me move about halfway and I found the low end rising and the top end dropping down a little bit, but it's seen a little bit more jagged in the response. Uh, and if I keep moving it off axis, it gets even more jagged, these peaks and valleys in the top end, but the low end evens out. So I was like, well, I don't wanna trade that much uh, variance in the top end for evening it out, so maybe I can use UQ. Well, what if I went to the center? What does it do if I back up the microphone? So if I back it up halfway, I actually get this big 164, uh, hump right here and the low end tops uh, drops off. So I'm not sure if that's a room mode or just something actually in the the uh, microphone itself. But if I back it up all the way to its maximum amount, again, a huge resonance up here at 161, the top end uh, is, is cranked even more. So I didn't like that. So I actually opted to leave it right in the center on axis. This had the most neutral mid-range response. I could use EQ to tame that and use EQ to tame that. Again, just one microphone. So let me pull up the EQ that I used. Here I've got the Neutron 4, and I basically made an inverse response. So if I bypass this plugin, 
bring in the EQ. I just made an inverse of what I needed. So I'm gonna sync this up now. Neutron only. So bypass it, bring this back in. You can see it's just a twin. So I just took what was happening here at the top end and the bottom end, made it inverse. Again, this is at 1 12th octave. So now let me bring it in. And now we're gonna get the flat. So this is post all processing. Actually, let me sync it up, sorry. So we have to ask the question, does flat sound good? I wasn't sure at this point. I didn't know if most amps wanted a bottom and lift to it like PAs do. Was there a relaxing, uh, relaxing of the top end? I really didn't know. So I plugged up, I played through it, and that's the tone that you heard, <laughs> basically with a flat EQ on the amp. And so it's like, okay, I guess my guitar is fairly well balanced. It doesn't mean we'll ever not ever use EQ in the mix or in post to fit in with an arrangement, but I thought to my ears, it was a good starting point. So that was really helpful information for me to know in the future, if I were working in a studio, reading my own context, either with a new plugin, a new amp, and just not really happy with what's going on, I can look and be like, how far away am I from flat? Again, this is not the end all be all. I'm not saying we should take all the tonal character out of an amp. I, I usually honestly got a lot of it out of the drive section in the amp. And we're still retaining some of what's happening with this 247 microphone, even though I've used EQ to offset what's happening in the cabinet. Uh, and for the final recording, I did introduce the ver reverb unit. It's it's the Tall Bird, which is a, a, a spring reverb. It sounds amazing. And that's what you heard on the recording here. Uh, but that's what I ended up doing. Uh, there were much trial and error. I know this seems pretty quick. There was like, oh, I just used EQ to get it flat, but this is probably version number six of me playing with what microphone, what cabinet, what got me to the quickest um, and least DSP intensive result. Because if I start adding a bunch of microphones, a bunch of cabinets, that's adding more resources. And I wanted to do it while leaving the treble and bass at noon. So if I'm playing within a band, I can use those to shape my sound to fit in the mix or on a per patch basis, but always knowing this Neutron EQ at the end is getting me to where I am at. Well, that was a lot of fun to walk you through <laughs> my tone time with my telly. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.